in this example we will look at how to deal with a super mesh uh, when solving circuits using the mesh current method the main steps involved in applying the mesh current method are shown here so let's apply these to the given circuit we can see that in this circuit we have two independent voltage sources and one independent current source step one is to identify and label the mesh currents recall that a mesh is a loop that does not contain any other loops within it and this circuit has three meshes and these have been labeled i1 i2 i3 and we have assumed a clockwise direction for all these meshes the next step is to check for the possibility of a super mesh voltage sources whether independent or dependent do not cause any issue with mesh current method and do not give rise to a super mesh however a current source can give rise to a super mesh and this depends upon the location of the current source if a current source is located at the boundary between two meshes then this gives rise to a super mesh so here we have the 5 ampere current source it's located between meshes 1 and 3 hence we have a super mesh we need to identify the boundary of the super mesh this is done by removing the current source so we exclude or remove this current source and then combine the two original meshes so this means the boundary of the super mesh is as follows so by eliminating the current source we have the super mesh so this super mesh has one two three four five six circuit elements we need to apply Kirchhoff voltage law to this super mesh so we can start at any of the components let's start at the 100 volt source we can see that current i1 is entering the terminal marked minus and leaving the terminal marked plus going from minus to plus is a voltage rise so we write this with a negative sign assuming passive sign convention so the first term is minus 100 next we have the 3 ohm resistor there are two currents i1 and i2 flowing in opposite direction through this resistor since we are applying kvl to the super mesh we give priority to the super mesh current so this voltage drop is the resistance times the current which is i1 minus i2 next we have the 2 ohm resistor and this has currents I3 and I2 flowing in opposite direction. So we give priority to I3 and we write this as 2I3 minus I2 is equal to 0. Next we arrive at the 50 volt source. I3 is entering the terminal marked plus and leaving the terminal marked minus. So this gives us a voltage drop of plus 50 volts so we have plus 50 then the 4 ohm resistor the current is only i3 so this is plus 4 i3 and then the last component is the 6 ohm resistor through which the only current is i1 so plus 6 i1 is equal to 0 so this completes the process of applying Kirchhoff voltage law to the super mesh. The remaining mesh is I2. So we just apply KVL to I2. We can start at the 10 ohm resistor. So this is 10 I2. And through the 2 ohm resistor, there are two currents. And now we give precedence or priority to I2. So this is 2 times I2 minus I3 and then through the 3 ohm resistor is 3 I2 minus I1 is equal to 0. Since we formed a super mesh 
we must write the super mesh constraint equation. Generally, mesh current method requires application of Kirchhoff voltage law. However, to obtain the mesh super mesh constraint equation, we need to use Kirchhoff current law, which states that the sum of currents entering a node is equal to sum of currents leaving. So this is the current source. So we can apply Kirchhoff current law to this or this node. Suppose we pick the bottom node and then we mark the directions of the currents. So we can see that I3 is entering, I1 is leaving, and there's also a six, uh, sorry, there's also a five amp current leaving. So applying Kirchhoff current law, sum of currents entering I3 is equal to sum of currents leaving which is I1 plus 5. This completes the process of writing the circuit equations for the given circuit. The next step is to solve the equations and we have three variables uh, I1, I2 and I3 and three equations. So we can solve, easily solve these to show that I1 is 1.75 amps I2 is 1.25 amps and I3 is 6.75 amps. The final step is to solve for the circuit variables. Here we have to find the power dissipated by the 10 ohm resistor. So this power is I squared R. The current through this resistor is I2 which is 1.25 25 squared multiplied by the resistance 10 and this gives us 15.625 watt. Thus in this circuit the 10 ohm resistor is dissipating this much power. This completes the solution to this example.